at the same speed. A little preview clips. I actually have a full tutorial on YouTube on on doing uh, the uh, the side art and the, and the kick plates on these. Um, so this was just kind of a quick little preview that uh, that I just kind of threw together. Just like the movies. Sure. That was off your YouTube, I take it. Yes. Yeah, that, that was off my YouTube. Like I said, I have a full tutorial on it going through all the various steps. All we have to do is go to YouTube and type in. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's YouTube slash this whole game. I think we'll take you to my channel of videos. Okay. Um, there's a mixture of. Uh, Tutorials and uh, and even some weird goofy cartoons that I have on there, but the majority of them are like putting on side arts, um, kick plates, control panel overlays on arcade games. Um, the video the the videos that I have right now for applying the side art don't cover the prep work, which is probably the more important part. Um, because the vinyl isn't really a shortcut to paint or anything like that, so your sides really have to be sanded nice and smooth and clean and have a nice, uh, you know, under protective coating on that. Can you just give us like a five-step process of prep work. Yeah, prep work. Um, for removing well, let's say I got an the Indiana whole thing. Um, I'm not super familiar with a lot of pinball artwork, so if it's a vinyl that's on there, you can heat it up with a heat gun and just start pulling that stuff off. Um, sand it down nice and smooth, and if you get it all the way down to the wood, give it a nice, uh, good uh, wood, just uh, primer. Uh, use an oil-based primer, not kills. a water-based. Like kills? Yeah, kills. I, I, as a matter of fact, both of those cabinets were, were, were coated with a oil-based kills. Okay, well, 
rolled that on with a nice foam roller and gave it a really uh, smooth, light sanding. And uh, by your grits of sandpaper. Um, the final grit, when it, by the time I was finished, light sand of 400. And that's just really light going over it, you know, with your hand, and then uh, you know, getting it all clean and dust free. You know, after that, um, I also use ta uh, tack cloth before I'll start uh, applying the art artwork. Do, 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 do. I'll break out some stuff. Some things I use a lot. The tack cloth, which you can just get at regular Home Depot, and usually in the staining department. So, you know, if you're familiar with like wood staining and stuff, they usually use these to clean up. Naphtha is another uh, product that I highly recommend for cleaning for surface prep. Before applying it, it'll remove uh, oils from fingerprints and everything. It'll it'll really give you a, a, a good clean surface to work on. So like something like this, I would take and just give it a good wipe down with, uh, with naphtha. Okay, and the tack cloth is only after you sand it to get the sawdust and stuff. Like exactly. Um, the naphtha can clean that up too if you put just a little bit or even just mist, uh, even a little bit on a paper towel or something just to help pick up all that extra dust on the cabinet after you've sanded it. Get it good and clean. You know, fill in any any spots with wood filler or anything like that. You know, and 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 your kilts will also help hide and show all that wood repair too. So once you've done your wood repair and you roll that kilts on, if you can see it, a little bump, then the vinyl is just going to accent that even more. Uh, I, I used a foam roller on both of those, so not not really. I mean, you know, since you go over, you know, with a, some fine sandpaper, you get it pretty smooth, um, and uh, and I usually, you know, have have always had good results with that. And I don't really have a place to spray, so. Now the food fight on the side art, that was, you know, kind of tricky. And I mean, the tutorial will show you, you know, basically how I aligned all the artwork because it's, it's very specific with all the borders and the shapes of the fruits and, and all that shape of the cabinet. So it was really important to get that perfectly aligned. And uh, the steps that I walk you through will pretty much put it on there completely, perfectly straight as it needs to be. The big difference between applying artwork now versus how it was done back in the day Atari had, when they printed those, they put on big sheets of white vinyl, printed blocks of wood, and then they were routed. So the artwork was already printed and applied before the cabinet was even assembled. So that's, so it makes it applying now a little more difficult in some cases. So, and that's why it makes it harder to align. It looked like you were starting with the long side first, and you're starting with the starting edge and then working. In other words, the short tops and bottoms you know, with laps. On the kick plate, uh, or on, on the side art, I, I usually start at the bottom. Okay. Uh, uh, and so I usually, if it's the full side, I'll have the cabinet laid on its side, so you can lay the artwork down and kind of line it up in place. Um, now on the kick plate, I did it lengthwise um, because that was the longest, straightest line to work off of that I could butt up against the cabinet and then work it into the other side. Uh, I don't think you really have that problem with pinball machines, but on a kick plate of the video games you have, the sides that protrude out. And so you can't really start at the bottom and work your way up without it. If it starts to drift one way or the other, it'll start kinking up in the corners. So it was easier to trim off one end to start it. And then when you get to the end, you can tuck it into the corner and then trim it off. So, but, uh, but yeah, you don't really run into that with, with the pinballs as, as much, so it's, uh, when you're rolling it out, it would be better to work. Your artwork most likely came rolled, and you always want to work in that direction. You don't want to cross. So if it was rolled narrow from, you know, lengthwise, yeah. you want to you want to put your artwork on the same way it was rolled. Well, it's a good question. Should this stuff be unrolled and laid out flat, or the cardboard pull off? You do. Um, 
we, uh, we had laid out the Donkey Kong artwork earlier today because it came rolled and it was super tight and it would just keep rolling up. So we laid it out flat earlier this afternoon and the stuff will relax pretty, pretty quick and easy. Um, this, this was pretty rolled tight. I mean, you could not lay this down flat without it. And uh, you can usually just lay it, lay it down overnight. I mean, it doesn't even really need a whole lot of weight, depending on how long it was rolled. This stuff, I think, had been rolled for a while. And we just had it under a pinball play field, and it's, it's fairly flat now. But uh, yeah, probably the night before you, at least the night before you want to install it, just lay it out and let it relax and well, I'm just thinking flatten out. If it's a long term down the road, why don't I just store it flat now? If you can, can yeah. you know, uh, then, then that's probably the best, the best thing to do. Um, you know, some artwork, side art, I mean, it's, you know, three foot by six foot. Yes. A lot of people don't have that kind of room just to, you know, have it stacked safely. You know, it's better stored in a roll somewhere where it's not going to get crushed and, you know, mangled up. When yes? You put it on, do you put a spray coating over that? Nope. Yeah. Now, uh, because, I mean, m most of the screen printed inks, I mean, they're pretty durable, you know. Um, so as long as it's a screen printed product, I mean, it's, you know, pretty much what, what they had before. I mean. Yeah. Yes. Yep. It's got some flexibility. Right. So. What's that? It's self adhesive vinyl. Self adhesive vinyl. Yeah. And and pretty much all the artwork is is done, done like that. Yeah. Do you know if the artwork um, that's available that they're selling like a planetary pinball is um, does it fade like the old stuff used to, or is it UV coated? You know, I'm not 100% on like all the individual vendors. Um, you know, most of the, especially the pinball stuff, I mean, I, I know they put a lot into it. Um, I, I've read a lot of things that some of it is UV clear coated. You know, I, I think it kind of depends on, on maybe the inks that they're using or maybe the process that, the, that they went through. Um, some of the stuff that I may like, uh, like inkjet stuff, some of that stuff will be UV clear coated for extra protection um, as opposed to being laminated or something. So. There's a mixture of stuff out there, so it's kind of hard to say. You still have to be careful with light. With light, at, you know. Again, some I'm. Some of this stuff from way back then it fades really. I mean, it's really bad. And the different types of inks that they used back then, it was all screen printed back then, and the first color to, to mostly fade in all screen printing inks is red. So anytime they use red, that's going to be the first color you see faded, you know, and or colors that contain red. So you look at a Miss Pac-Man the pink is virtually white because the red in it has faded out. So it, it's kind of always been a common problem, um, but we're talking over a span of, you know, 20, 30 years. That um, the Indiana Jones. And the Indiana, yeah. So uh, the, the, the red has always been prone to do that, you know, since, you know, and, and I'm sure it's still the same. I don't think it's changed. And, uh, and the UV coating, I mean, that may slow things down, but, uh, you know, but it, it'll still, you know, probably happen. But, you know, some games were kept in front of store windows. And, you know, I mean, it really depends on where you're storing and where you've got the game. Is in regular light, it's not going to fade um, like what you've seen in the past. Do you, did some days of vinyl, do you ever use anything beyond that, like a contact cement or anything, or just strictly the self adhesive vinyl? Just strictly the vinyl. What happens if you screw it up and get a bubble in it at this point? If you what? If you screw it up and get a bubble in it, um, depends how big and how bad the bubble is. Um, also, and I'm not real sure on how a lot of pinball artwork comes. Does it usually come pre-masked or not? Pre-masked. Pre let me now. Here, let me explain the pre-mask. Some artwork will have a masking film on it. It's kind of a translucent paper, which makes it a little more durable in it'll be easier to work with if it does. Some of the pinball art that I've seen does not have that. A lot of the video game artwork does. Uh, it makes it easier to work with because if you get a bubble or something like that, it'll help you be able to pull that vinyl back up without stretching it and pulling it all apart. Because the vinyl is kind of stretchy. and So this pre-mask kind of helps keep it together, keep it from stretching. So it's much easier to, to remove. Uh, I, co I do cover that in the, in the in both tutorials, one of one of the uh, kick plates was pre-masked and one of them wasn't, and so I kind of go over the differences on there. But uh, the best thing that you can do is uh, use a little heat, a little heat from a heat gun, low, and it'll it'll loosen the glue up to make it easier to pull apart. 
Yeah. And, and never, uh, when you're working on that, have the adhesive go to itself. You'll, you'll never get it apart. Huh? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> 250 bucks down the tube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you definitely want to avoid that. Um, you can apply it wet or dry. Most of the stuff that I'll do is mostly dry, which basically means if you've ever heard of anything, if you apply it wet, it's usually a mixture of a, like a water and alcohol base that you can wet the side of the, the, the sticky side of the decal and or the cabinet or both. And that'll be easier to work out all your bubbles and everything first, but you gotta be careful if you make sure you had a good seal because the water will mess with the wood. So um, there are advantages and disadvantages of that. If, you're, if you've got vinyl on the cabinet, then I'd recommend doing the water and then you wouldn't have that problem because vinyl on vinyl is very sticky and it's hard to not get a bubble in it. Little bubbles you can just pop with a little needle and then you know heat up and then press out. So if you got like little tiny things just go in there with a little needle and push them in. Well, Treasure Crow says something about using Windex. Don't, don't use Windex. Their, I haven't applied their thing yet. I don't know what's, what exactly they were recommending that for. Basically, what I just described, doing it wet method. Um, a lot of people have recommended Windex. I don't recommend Windex. Some Windex, or some versions of Windex, and there's a lot of variations, have things in it that will attack and not make this vinyl stick. Kind of like when you mix the water and alcohol that I mentioned earlier. That's usually the easiest thing to do. You just do a 50-50 mix, water and alcohol. You use regular alcohol, um, isotope alcohol, not rubbing alcohol because it contains oil. So, but uh, in Windex, there's things like ammonia and other things that will uh, kind of lessen, lessen the stick on that and, uh, and leave, uh, you know, in, or in some cases, little oil residues and stuff from it. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend Windex, and that's the other reason why I recommended this for your clean up, you know, for your surface clean before you even apply it. Any uh, anything else? I can't actually apply this because I don't have I don't have the key for the back of this, and it's got bolts in the way. Um, so I can't actually do it all. Um, Who has the key? You know, I don't I don't know. Kendra, can you see if they have a key for the Donkey Kong? Because unless it just turns, no, and it doesn't. And the only wrenches that I have are these, but uh, but I can't go through a lot of the a lot of the basic steps of it. Now, if the pinball art isn't uh, isn't pre masked I mean, what are you guys using to to stick it on there? I mean, have you done any of them? Nothing at all. Um, usually, apply vinyl with a squeegee. Um, I don't know if they send them or sell them or. I usually send these out with the artwork that I sell and print. What's that? Where do you get those at? Usually at, at like sign supply stores, um, you know, or vinyl, you know, uh, sign sign supply places. Um, and if the artwork's not pre matched, you can also get like a cotton slip for them as well. You can get it at the same place, and that'll squeegee will basically go in there. And that'll keep the uh, keep you from scratching up the artwork. So it is not. Fit. There we go. Anyway, it's similar to the mask that's on there. So it's just if you get artwork that's not masked, then this will help you uh, keep you from scratching up that artwork while you're applying it. So the the masking serves really two purposes: to keep you from scratching up the artwork, and then to keep it from stretching when you're trying to work and apply it. Oh yeah, we might. Have. <laughs> we might. I can't. <laughs> I, need, I need to remove these bolts. That would make like, it's gonna be hard to do our side work without that. So. <laughs> we only have keys for one Donkey Kong. I'm hoping this is it. And Yay! Uh, All right. Okay. And then my second problem would be whether or not I have a wrench to take those off. 
because the only things I had were these. Uh, yeah, that almost works. Um, I was able to help with the keys. I can check with the... Uh, maybe, a, maybe a 10 millimeter. Because this is 11 and it, it's a little loose. I can do some of the prep work while I'm waiting. This was not the game we had originally planned to do, so the stuff that I brought for the other game <laughs> to put on didn't quite work out, and uh, they, they didn't have it ready. So we're having to improvise a little. No, that, you know, it's not even really painted or prepped or anything. They just happen to have a Donkey Kong here that didn't have artwork on it. <laughs> Since somebody happened to have side art from a Donkey Kong. So it just, it just kind of worked out by default. You know, because it's, uh, it's not the smoothest thing. You know, you'd normally probably fill in holes like this that aren't even being used. Um, So That'll work. My one request, do you know where the, the the keys and tools are? No. Oh, yeah, I know where the keys are, yeah. Yeah, if you can, when you're done, these need to go back there. That's Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. As well as the key. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, I'm from uh, Portland. I actually, I have a print shop in uh, Oregon City. Uh, where I do all my all my printing for uh, mostly primarily arcade games. Um, this old this old game. For some of the older older uh, EMs and and whatnot, uh, I've done some 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 stencils uh, for some of those, so I have some of those sets available. Mostly the older, like kind of simple circle squares, you know, some, I mean, yeah. And some have a little more detail than others. It just kind of depends. Basically the two color. The two color. Yeah, basically the, the two color setup ones, yeah. Um, sometimes, I mean, other times I'll, you know, if, if somebody can scan the scan the cabinet, um, or in some cases, if it's like real simply, you know, ge geometric shapes and circles and stuff, 
I can usually walk somebody through and they can give me measurements for how, line, how thick the lines are, basic cabinet dimensions, and I can pretty much just draw it just by looking at it and knowing, you know, some of the spacing. What's your smallest run before it becomes even profitable to spend your time on a, on, a, on a stencil set? You know, I mean, I primarily do it for kind of fun, really. Um, so, I mean, I'll just, if somebody just says, you know, because I mean, I, I like to draw anyway. So if somebody just sends me pictures and it looks, you know, easy enough, I, I'll just spend a few hours and I'll just draw it up one morning. So. Bon voyages are faded and ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you. Okay, yeah, so send me some pictures and I'll, and I'll look at it. So, I mean, if, again, if it's nothing too, you know, complicated, I mean, I, I can usually... 47 with stuff taken off out the back and the rest is clouds. I could probably do that, but I okay. that stencil would be nice. So. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up or send me a picture or something. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. okay. All right. I, I'm not sure what the name of that one is. There, there's like some jets and there's some clouds. I mean, it sounds like the one you're describing, but I don't bon think. Bali Bon Voyage, 1974. No, it wasn't. Has a different. All those, you know, some some titles like would use the same design or variations of the same design. I think this one is maybe Super Flight or if that sounds familiar, maybe. Because I, I want to say there was like three pinball machines that use this same artwork that I that I did for 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 this particular one, so uh, you know uh, and like things like Buckaroo that are just like you know X's and O's, um, you know that I think that's used in like three or four different you know machines, but you know maybe the circle size changed or something, so. When you make, since you make stencils for quite a number of different machines. Mm -hmm. That I can't help much with, um, you know, unless I, you know, actually have the machine where I can, you know, maybe advise you on the color. I mean, just basically based on a picture that I find on the internet, I can't really go by that. Um, so your best bet is to probably match it yourself the best you can, you know. And sometimes even posting, asking in forum groups and stuff, you may get mixed results because their machine might be faded or, you know, you're never going to get the right answer or the same answer every time either. So. Color-wise, does get tricky. You said that we can take a picture and scan it in like a JPEG. Mm -hmm. Is there a minimal resolution that you need on 380. Well, 300 if I'm going to print. If I'm just drawing something, um, even 150 would probably be okay as long as there wasn't a lot of tiny, small detail. So you can take that JPEG then and you can convert that to the vector file. Into a vector file and scale it, you know, and scale it out and everything. And you do that. And I do that. Yeah, so you can either, you know, scan it in pieces and I can stitch it together and, you know, in some cases you don't necessarily have to scan if there's like a line that goes across the cabinet. You don't have to scan that whole line. I just need to know, you know, where that line goes and starts. I don't necessarily need, you know, I can, you know, finish point A to point B, you know, and, and, do, and do the filler. So, you know. So you can get you can get away with just scanning certain pieces of the artwork, and then I could continue the lines, you know, to the edge of the cabinet if need if need be. If it's just you know like you know something coming out of the back of a rocket ship or something, they'll just do, draw a straight line across, you know, down to each corner of the machine or something. So I just need to know the the height and the width, you know, in, in cases like that, and then a scan of the main chunk of the artwork. Let me know when you got a little break coming up. I'll go get a picture right out there from the pool area. Oh, okay. <laughs> The snake one, uh, Grand Lizard. I, th I think that one's probably the more detailed-oriented of the ones that that, uh, that I've done. So, and and sometimes I can I can draw a stencil set in an hour, and then other times I might spend you know a week on you know a, a few hours at a time. What do you charge to do a yeah, usually just yeah, about 125 bucks from from start to finish. So, and that, that includes you know, uh, that doesn't include like scanning or anything. But I mean, if you give me something to work with, I'll draw it up and, and get it cut and separate it all out. So I, I don't think I've ever had anybody mess up a stencil, um, or, or if they did, you know, or, or if the stencil was, you know, if I, if I cut something wrong or, you know, there was something not quite right with it, you know, I'd just simply, you know, do a fix or if, 
you know, if you maybe missed a, a spot. I can usually cut a small section that I can send back out to you to, to do a little quick fix or something. So. Yeah, but uh, very few, uh, very few. Pro I mean, because when you're only doing two color, you know, two colors on a pinball, it's it's usually pretty straightforward. Because um, I don't even really give you anything to register the two colors. It's usually the stencils are cut the shape of the machine, and you just you know line them up. A lot of stencils really weren't registered really well to begin with. So, you know, so if you want colors slightly out of register, you know, for a personal preference, you can. You know, you can just shift things around and, and try and create that same effect. You guys who do, who've used your product before, they complain about the fact the sharp lines at the edges of these things. All the time. Okay. <laughs> There's no way around that. There's a few things that you can do on certain stencils. Um, I have hand, hand cut. What I'll do is I'll, I'll cut, I'll computer cut a regular stencil and I'll apply it to a, to a more rigid uh, polystyrene material. And then I can come in and score score that as a guide, and then snap out all those parts. And then you have something similar to what they painted with it, you know, back back then, where they would use like you know sheet metal type or brass stencils. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that doesn't include the 125. Right. That that would be a whole se separate deal. So that's that's your way to get around those hard those hard lines. The other way to get around those hard lines is just don't spray it so hard and so thick and full. Do it kind of soft, especially around those those edges and you can get a very similar effect. So, you know, or don't don't apply it super tight. You can, you know, kind of pull up some of that around the edging and let the paint just kind of, you know, bleed underneath it a little. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're, you know, you're replicating, you're trying to replicate factory flaws, you know. Um, so, you know, and they all vary from machine to machine. So it's a matter of preference. But, uh, but yeah, I, I've had a lot of people, you know, <laughs> that's usually the number one. What's that? One of, one of the fun ones? You know, all I'm really doing in this case is measuring, there's one on the other side. So, as far as like what the original factory measurement was, I don't know. I'm not sure if that other side is even original, but, uh, but it would be silly to put it anywhere else <laughs> in, in this case. Um, and from the flyers that I've seen on this one, this Donkey Kong actually comes up a lot. Where, where the height of this actually place. And from all the pictures that I've seen, the center of this tends to line up here. The center, like if you were to draw a center line of, of the, this part of the peel of the decal, yeah. it actually lines up with the center of the bracket. Right. Um, so if you look at the flyers and most original pictures. Sure. So you can pretty much get a pretty good estimation on that. But I, I mean, I've seen other people put it way down here and Uh, say that again? Any idea what the factory tolerances were on the imagery as far as positioning? I mean, like they say, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be positioned such and such within a quarter of an inch. They probably, most likely, in, in the case like this, they probably had like a jig or something that would just kind of flap down and fold. So they'd kind of have a pretty good placement for that. 
I've seen, you know, uh, some Atari videos that they would have, like even when they were gluing and saping the cabinets together, they'd have like an acrylic jig cutout with the cutouts of where all that stuff should be. Um, artwork, you know, screws and things like that. And the larger side art, like I said, was a, applied in a blank sheet first. And, and, and I would imagine pinball was probably similar, uh, where, where it was already pre-done and then they cut and routed the cabinet after the artwork was already printed. It makes printing a lot easier too when you're, when you're dealing with something that's thicker on already in wood, as opposed to trying to print on some flimsy vinyl, you know, color after color um, underneath a press, you know, so uh, the wood made it easier to print. So if you do a lot of artwork, I mean, uh, for alignment and stuff, if you had particular jigs that you would set up, I, I have some that uh, that I, you know, will save because I know I'll I'll use it again. So if I were doing a bunch of Donkey Kongs, I'd probably already have something of a spacer set up for that. Um, on one of those videos that I did for the kick plate, I actually had a cutout for where the coin door would be. And it's like a plug that will fit right in the coin door. So when I'm putting the vinyl on, it's still, it's nice and flat and smooth and I have something to work on. With, without the coin door there, the vinyl wants to just go inside and start to buckle in around the door. And it's much harder to work with that way. So, but I do enough of them where I, I made something, you know, that I can use from game to game to game because they're pretty much the same size in all of them. So pin, on the pinball ones, on the, when you're working with the fronts, find, find a piece of, you know, three quarter inch wood or something or half inch, whatever it is, and, and, and stick it in there. So it doesn't have to be super tight because you, you're going to want to pull it out, but, uh, but it will make, it will make it a lot easier to do. I'm going to do this one wet primarily. I, I would recommend doing it wet, like I said earlier, if you're going to apply vinyl to vinyl because it's real sticky. This Nintendo cabinet has like some weird plastic coating on it and the vinyl sticks to this really super hard. Um, so I'm going to, I'll, I will miss this one a little bit just to keep the bubble factor down on that. It'll be a lot easier to do. Uh, what I did was I, uh, that ain't sticking very well. Once it's in place, well, I'll usually have two inch tape. I didn't bring any. You can probably do these on the back boxes and stuff, hinge it off the top. And uh, your tape will act as, as a hinge. So once it's in place, you can lift and then peel your backing off of it and work, work it down. And uh, in, this, in this case, I only went off the top just simply because there was more of a straight, a straight edge across the top. But you can do it off the, off the bottom too if you've got enough to, to work with. So whatever is easier. Uh, I think some of them do, and in some cases, like uh, I think when I did Attack from Mars, they were printed, I think, in pairs. So I think when they're even shipped out, they may just come on a, a big square sheet, maybe. Same thing with the kick plate. I think it, they're like all three pieces on one piece, and you got to cut them out. Um,
And I only peel off about, probably about an inch or two at a time. And then as you, as you peel this back, your backing will kind of act as a, as a separator, keep the vinyl away from the cabinet. But I just misted the surface just a little bit with water just to give it a little something to slide on. And then the trick is mainly just to work as straight as you can across and just pulling it down just a little bit at a time. Yep, I just sprayed just a little bit on top, and then uh, and then I just kind of missed it a little bit of the cabinet as I squeeze you down. You know, I don't know if there's anything specific. I can tell you that when it's hot, um, it's it's definitely going to be more stretchy and a little harder to work with. When it's cold, it's going to be more brittle. And I mean, the vinyl could could even just it might, might even just crack on you if, if it's too cold. Um, and uh, you know, so ba I mean, probably just basic room temperature. I mean, you don't work in a cold garage, and uh, you know, um, you probably don't want to do it. You know, in the middle of summer, you know, you, you know, for the same reason. So just some, something really, you know, just basic and comfortable, really. But uh, but temperature will affect you know, uh, uh, the, the results. And then if you're, if you have pre-mask on it, you can, you can wet it again. It'll get a little more transparent. And you can squeeze it again and you, it'll make it easier to feel any bubbles that you have in there. And then if you do feel something you probably have a better chance of trying to work out that bubble now than you do later. You know, well, especially if it's got masking on it, you can usually just kind of walk, you squeeze you across it, and just kind of basically walk and push that bubble right off to the closest edge uh, of where it may be. So the second thing that that water will do is if you have artwork that has pre-mask on it, it'll make it easier to peel off, especially if it's old stuff. If you're doing like old NOS artwork that has like pre-mask on there has been on there for 20 years and you can't get it off, spray it with a little water and it'll get real soft and it'll make it easier to pull off. But like I said, if, if, you're, if you're using any type of water or anything on a cabinet, just make sure it's good and sealed and, and that water's not getting to your wood. Now, for peeling off the pre-mask, when you do it wet, it's going to take longer to dry. The actual decal to the uh, to the cabinet and getting it started is the hard hardest part. But when you peel it. Can you take a hair dryer to it? 
Uh, if you're careful, because you don't want to, because the heat will also keep it from sticking. But you can usually just let it sit there for a little while, and uh, it'll it'll start drying up fairly quick. part that wants to come up the most is where I wetted the beginning of it the most because I've squeegeed out most of the rest of it. When you remove the what is that? Actually something underneath the wood. When you're removing the pre-mask keep it close to the cabinet and, and peel it at an angle. What's that? It, it can lift. It, it can lift even without the water. Um, and, and I don't know how old the, the artwork itself is. You know, this this may have been around for a while. The older the artwork, the less stick it's going to have. But it seems to be doing pretty good. There's a few little bad spots from the bumps in the wood. But wetting, wetting the pre-mask will make this real easy to, to, to peel off. Otherwise, it's usually a lot harder to... Uh, where's the... These holes? Yeah, I mean, there's not much you can do about those. I mean, normally you'd putty in and fill... Like I said earlier, you'd putty in and fill that stuff, but it'll also create weird bubbles, too. For little tiny stuff, I use uh, I use an Elmer's. Um, it comes in different colors. I, I forget exactly what it's called. Um, yeah, it's like Elmer's wood putty. I, I think it's called Carpenter's Elmer's Carpenter's putty, maybe. And it comes in different colors. There's so like a white, a brown, a tan. Yeah, and that's usually what I use, especially because like even after all all kilts, I'll start seeing a bunch of little spots that I didn't see before, and I'll come in with just a little bit of that. Of that uh, of that wood filler or putty, really, it dries really fast. Usually, in about 15-20 minutes, it's ready to sand, and uh, and it sands real easy. It's it's a real easy sand. So you usually get it. It won't slow you down too much. If you're doing some really hard repairs, then you're going to want something a little stronger. Um, you know, um, for like holes, bolt holes and stuff, I use a uh, it's a, it's a two part of wood epoxy stuff. It's like a putty with a compound in it that, that you can form and that stuff is pretty pretty uh, pretty easy to uh, to work with those are about the only two things I've, I've really had to use on wood repair I don't do a whole lot of wood repair um, mm-hmm Like an auto body filler, I mean, like I mean, there's like Bondo and fiberglass filler and stuff like that, um, you know, which I, you know you could use just as just as easy, I suppose. Um, I'd probably stay away from water-based products because um, even the wood putties that I use, I think, are you know a, a solvent. The way to the way to know is if you don't know like what's what's a water-based product and what's a non, look at the cleanup, and if it says clean up with water, then it's a water-based product. You know, but if it says, you know, clean up with mineral spirits or something like that, then that's, that's probably your better bet, um, depending on the type of wood and repair that you're doing. Are you working bubbles towards the hole? 
Yeah, I have. I ended up with these two weird spots from those holes, and you kind of see it keeps wanting to. The hole is. And there, it's gone. And then you, you just kind of slowly walk it, just kind of back and forth. Don't don't force it in one specific direction, because then the your vinyl will just bunch up and crease. So you kind of just want to walk it real slow into, you know, e either a hole if there was a hole there. I mean, it, the bubble was caused by that hole up there, or divot or whatever that is. Um, but uh, and those are gouges in the wood there. So, but generally, I mean, when I do it, I don't end up with too many bubbles just simply because you're, you're only squeegeeing down about an inch, inch at a time. The, the more backing you pull off, and the more air you're going to have in that area you're working with, and that's where the bubbles come from, is, is in the open area that you've got exposed. But there she is, pretty. And then if you have to trim artwork, um, I would always, I, I always start with a brand new blade, you know, um, just to make sure I'm always using a new one. But, uh, but other than that, um, where are those? Mm -hmm. Oh, do they? Uh, you know, I use those too, actually. That'd be just a nice, big, hard, flat edge to trim off, usually. Now, usually when I do edging, if, I, if I'm doing a full vinyl re uh, repair, it applies to some pinballs, but I'll heat up the edging and, pull, and wrap it around the edge. And, uh, and in, well, in the case of video camera, you have T-molding to hide that. So I'd actually fold it over the edge and then tuck it into the T-molding slot and trim it off inside the groove and, and not have to worry about even cutting it. So, so then if you end up with you know, a lot of unevenness, just even from your blade, just from a rough cabinet, um, you, you won't see it. The vinyl will cover that up and it'll be tucked tuck down inside. No, no. Um, aren't, aren't, they cut, aren't they using the scalpel to cut it just a millimeter away from the edge and then paint the edge black or something? Yep, and, and I've seen a few videos, on, uh, tutorials on eBay where they're, like on the front where they meet at the corners, um, the kick plate, because you've you got to do some overlapping there too, right? Or is that the part you're talking about they paint it, where they cut it short and then they paint the, 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 the seam, basically? Okay. They'll trim that. They'll trim it back from the edge just a tiny little bit. And they'll okay. That black because usually back boxes are, um, are well, they're painted black around the rim anyway. Right, w which makes sense. And and the, the reason for that is so they don't peel off the edge. Oh yeah, so where they get right. rubbed all, they start wanting to come. Off. Right, because once they start to come off, they're just going to want to keep coming off. Right, right, right. So I mean, I haven't seen any specific videos like what you're talking about, but that would be why they would do that. Yeah. But in, in, in this case, I mean, I primarily do this stuff and the T-molding, you know, will take care of that problem usually. Because even if you cut it off here, it's kind of hard to, to get to that, you know, to, to start peeling it. Because once it starts to peel, then uh, not much you can do about it other than try and cut it off later. Now, the on a game cabinet, sure. But in the case of the pinballs that we were just talking about, they don't have that option. So. But I, I have seen other other tutorials online where the, where they've overlapped edges, on uh, like from the front the front coin door, ra wrapping around the sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something I recently saw because I was always curious how they how the the pinball guys were doing that um, because most of that stuff was screened directly on the painted wood. I mean the pinball cabinet, the, a lot of them were were painted solid and then the screening went directly onto the cabinet. They weren't a lot of it wasn't vinyl. Uh, yeah, I don't know when they switched over, but uh, but the, the, that was the big difference. I, I'm, I plan to one of the ones I plan to do next is Back to the Future, and I was that's why I started researching to find out how how they were doing that. 
because it, you know, that was screened directly to the wood. The cabinet was just painted blue and then it was screened to the wood. I don't know what the first game was that had vinyl. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. But you said Indiana Jones was. Were they? Okay. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll have to go out and look. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was something I was curious. I just started kind of researching the, the whole pinball application part of it. So, um, because I was I was curious because I plan to, plan to start doing, you know, some of that stuff. Not necessarily for sale, but just for my own restorations and, and whatnot. So, but that's that's kind of the basics of it. I mean, they, they kind of carry over for you know for 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 both uh, the arcades and the pins. I'd probably say these are probably easier, <laughs> maybe. You know, I don't know because you've got on a pinball. There's just there's nothing to work off of. You're going like like right off the edge. Uh, you know, in, in this case, I mean, I was able to hinge this off. You don't really have that so much with. Uh, you know, you don't have that with, with pinball. I mean, you might be able to try and hinge it off the back if you're doing a side, maybe. I don't know. I've never done one, so um, that would probably be my approach, would be to do it off the back and, and, and kind of work it the same way I did those kick plates, you know, or, or the side art, just starting in one, at one side and working, down, you know, working down the side of it. Thank you, Rich. Yeah, thanks, guys. That's the end of it? Yeah. Was it? Was that the whole hour? Holy moly, it sure was.